Hey YouTube, we're back again with another video on the DIY Bluetooth speaker build. And today we're going to be talking about the boxes in partic and, and the speakers. And in particularly, uh, what size to make the box, how to determine the size, how to do the layout, and how to make the cuts. And of course, how to piece it all together. So, let's first start off talking about the size of the box and what size you need. This is all dependent upon your speakers. Now these speakers are full range speakers and each speaker has a certain size box that it works best in. And typically you'll, if you buy the speakers from somewhere like Parts Express, which Parts Express is where most people buy their speakers, you're gonna go ahead, they're gonna go ahead and give you the dimensions for that. They're gonna tell you, you need so many cubic feet box for a sealed box, and they'll tell you what frequencies it will go down to if it's in a sealed box, or they will tell you a vented bo box. And a vented box would be considered a ported box. I'm gonna show you what a port looks like because this speaker actually had a port on it, and it has about a one inch port on it. That right there at the bottom of the box is a port. That goes all the way into the enclosure. That one goes about three inches in, and that tunes it to a certain frequency, so it'll actually get a little lower frequency than a typical uh, speaker. And so what you're gonna do is you're gonna take that measurement, whatever it tells you to for the port, for the size enclosure, the cubic feet, or it might say liters, you can change liters over to cubic feet. Um, and you're gonna go to the website that I have down below. That website down below will give you different ways to figure out the cubic feet of boxes. What you're going to want to do is you're going to start inputting dimensions in there. So many inches, that is in inches. So, and, and, and then you're also going to put in the wood thickness. I'm going to show you exactly how that works after I talk about how I determined the size of this box. Because I didn't have the dimensions for this. Um, I'm sorry, I, I, I didn't Yeah, I didn't have the box dimensions for these because I didn't buy these speakers. I took it from this. So there's no way for me to say, oh, well, I need a, a two cubic foot box or a one cubic foot box or a, in this case, it was actually a 0.117 cubic foot box. And there's no way for me to, to figure that out um, from the speakers themselves. The only way for me to figure that out was to figure out what the dimensions of this. Now, if you take a look at this, this is like a triangle style enclosure. Um, that's important because on that website that uh, I showed you, there is a, tr a way to figure out the triangle size enclosure. You just go further down and you enter the dimensions, you enter the thickness of the material, and it will give you a rough idea of what the cubic feet of this box is. A cubic foot of this box, after I entered all those dimensions in, was 0.117. And so I knew that I wanted to create my box around the same size. I say around the same size because anything inside the box, okay, like so amplifier, for example, inside the box, um, is going to take up cubic feet. Okay, so you need to take that into consideration when you build your box. So if this takes up, which this takes up very little, but um, let's say this took up like a 0 0.002 cubic feet, then you're going to want to make your box just a little bit bigger um, in order to house that. Uh, assuming that this doesn't have a lot of internal components. This actually had a ton of internal components, so I kept the box exactly at 0.117. It was very similar to the size that I needed. So when I did that, I decided what size box do I need. So I started inputting dimensions in that website. Uh, website, And I, I finally came up with, I don't like to make things square. Resonance usually doesn't work great in square. Uh, I mean, it, it can. I mean, cubes actually work fine. But I, I try to keep them a little under, outside of square if I can. Um, and so what I chose was 5.5 inches high by 6 inches deep by 10 inches wide. I chose those dimensions because I got exactly 0.117 cubic feet and because if I used a five and a half inch high box by six inches wide, since this is half inch thick material, three of my cuts could be exactly the same. Both my front face cut, my top and my bottom could both 
could all three be five and a half inches by 10 inches cuts. And so that really uh, cuts down the amount of work that you're doing on the table saw and uh, allows you to use less waste. Um, I cut all these with the table saw. And so the three I, I told you about, these three are five and a half by 10. We're gonna show you those here in a minute. The back, since the back is gonna go recess in between two half inch pieces, those half inch pieces are gonna go further out into the back and this will this will recess into those. This need to be an inch shorter. So that piece was an inch shorter than uh, these. So instead of being five and a half inches high, it's only four and a half inches high. And these also have to be four and a half inches high. These are the two sides. And, um, and, and they're actually going to be a little shorter too. And we're going to talk about why that is. That's because of the back piece once again. Um, but let me give you some uh, cutting tips before I say anything else. Cutting tips. When you have your saw cut up, set your saw, for example, 10 inches. And rip as many pieces of 10 inch pieces that you need uh, without moving the saw. That, that just guarantees all of your size pieces are going to end up being exactly the same, same width. If you keep moving your adjustment back and forth, back and forth every time you need a 10 inch cut, they're going to be off by a little. And that's, I mean, you, you can sand it down later, but you might as well cut it. And then, then do all your 10 inch pieces, then do all your four and a half inch pieces, and just keep doing that so you can keep consistency. Um, you will notice I have two separate, two small pieces over here. These are actually going to be glued together and the amp will be screwed onto that at the end. Um, and that's just going to be to hold the amp into place in the final final build um, so it has something to screw onto. And we'll explain that in, here in a minute too. Um, so let's show the, the cuts. So we, you will always have six pieces of wood if done correctly, okay, just for a normal cube. So you have two sides, you have a rear, and you have a bottom, a top, which is this one, and you have a front. Now, you're going to notice that uh, the top has some places where I messed up on, and so I used some wood filler and some wood glue to fix that and sand it down. and. That's going to be all good at the end. I'm going to show you this cutout is actually for the Lapai amplifier. And that's going to fit in there. If you notice, I did recess the bottom. I did that because I didn't want the whole Lapai amplifier sticking out. So you're going to see that I have a little bit of the silver going all the way around in there. It does. It's not a perfect... Um, fit meaning that this this doesn't stick out the top. This is recessed just a little, um, and that's that's by design. I, I chose to do that because to make this absolutely perfect. You see these fins out here. You're not gonna be able to really cut those in perfectly. So you're. I decided to recess it. Plus these fins right here um, are not going to be able to stick outside the box. They have to go inside the box. So. Part of it's going to have to be recessed either way, and so I chose to recess it like this. Um, and that was my personal preference. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to set this right here on the side of the table. And I'm going to show you how this hooks into there, so you have a basic understanding. So it'll look something similar to that. Um, you're starting to see a little bit on the sides. That's not actually there. That's the camera angle, and I'm not actually getting it all the way against there and that's that's my fault so there that's a better idea of what it's going to look like and the final build um, it should look really nice afterwards um, of course all that will be painted and look nice you might see this hole right here remember i told you that we need to have that rocker switch for the power button and so this rocker i just used a router bit and routed that out same with all this this is all just using a router with a router table and that was will push flush down and be flush afterwards. Um, let's just assemble the rest of the box just so you can get an idea of what it is. And I want to talk to you about how to cut the holes too. So remember I told you this was going to have to be a half inch shorter. This is the reason why. Because you don't want this to go to the very end in the type of box that we're building. You need something for the rear to screw on to. 
um, because you're, you're going to want to be able to make the rear removable so that if you ever need to get to any internal components, you can. So this is the rear. If you notice, the rear is a half inch smaller on every side. Half inch smaller on this side, this side, the top and the bottom. The reason why it's half inch smaller is like I said, we can screw these in and then later we can remove this to get to any components. And the top will fit right on like this. And now you have yourself a little box. Now let's talk about these holes. I have not done any sanding yet. That'll be in the painting video, which will probably come in the next couple days. The reason why, or I'm sorry, the way I cut these holes, I used a jig and I used a router. Now, I've linked down below the jig that I used. Uh, I got it from Amazon. I'm sure they sell it other places like they, I'm sure they sell it places like Home Depot and some other places. That's all I did is I just cut those holes with that. The way I measured that is I measured the outside of the speaker to the outside of the speaker and cut it. The reason why I measured from the outside is these are bottom mounted speakers. So if you see, they, they mount from the back side. Um, there are some that are top mounted where the screws go in right around here, right, right around the surrounds. And this mounts on top. If that was the case, then you would want to recess this. Um, and you would measure, uh, once again, this outside for the recess. And then for the smaller sides, you would, whatever, you would measure the outside of that to get the smaller size. Um, cause, and you're going to want to do your recess first, because if you don't do your recess first, you have nothing for the jig to grab onto to, to cut the hole out. So you always want to do the recess first. So for example, here's something that I did recess and this is going to go on the speaker box. Um, I recessed these. I had to actually recess them twice. That's why you, you see a little bit of a a little bit of a underline. It's not really a big issue. No one's ever going to see this. I'll just do these in anyway after we're done painting it. Um, but I recessed it once. Ended up being but my, the bit that I was using in the router ended up not being enough to take it out once. So I had to make it even a little bit smaller. Recess it again, and then everything fit. So then the final cut I did was to go all the way through and cut this out. And the way I, I measured that is I measured from here to here. And to make sure that I was directly on center, I used the screw holes as a guide to make sure that I was measuring exactly from the center to the center. And, uh, and then I got my recess. Now these will fit perfectly in recess. I do have to still, like I said, all, all these are rough right now. I still have to sand. But that's what it'll look like afterwards. And these, this is going to be screwed onto this particular unit. This is something that I decided I wanted to do for this unit. And it'll be screwed on, and it'll sit just like that. And that will be to protect those woofers. I think those woofers are pretty ugly uh, by themselves, and I wanted to make sure it looked a little nicer. And so I, I'm going to have this. I am going to, like I said, screw it on. That way, if anything should ever happen to one of these or you wanted to get behind there for whatever reason, you can. You can. It'll be very simple to get behind there. I'll just use some decorative screws on the outside. Um, and that's really it. That's all you need to know about building a speaker box. The last thing I will just show you just so we're clear. These will sit in here. Something like this with this sitting behind it. And the reason why this is gonna sit behind it, this is gonna be glued on, and we're gonna use a brad nailer and nail it down. This sticking here, that's just gonna give it some base. We're also gonna brad nail that to that back piece. And that will allow us, give us something to screw the amplifier onto. Um, a, and that's just so it'll sit up there and we don't have to worry about anything. We will stick some speaker gasket tape around here to make sure that uh, there's no air leaks as well. And we'll talk about that when we get a little bit further along. But that's the basics of the box. Just take some measurements. Uh, you're gonna want a table saw, a router, um, and, and you're, you're pretty good. There's one other thing I wanna say. If, 
if this is the only speaker you're going to build, you're not going to build anything else, you don't want to buy a router, you don't mind if they're top mounted, like you don't need them necessarily recessed, and you're doing something like I did, like cannibalizing this, you can use this as an outline. Basically, you just take this piece off, trace it with a pencil, right? And then use like a jigsaw or a router to, to, um, to cut that out. It won't be perfect. You'll have to do some sanding and some other things, but it'll get the job done in a pinch and it'll save you. You know, I think right now the jig's like between 30 and 40 bucks. So it'd save you about 30 to $40, which would be great. Um, cause not everyone has that, that type of money to spend. Um, especially if this is the only time you're ever going to use a circle jig. Okay, guys, I hope you learned something. This is the box. Tomorrow we will go ahead and show you how to glue and nail it together, and then we'll prep it for paint. Thanks, guys. Have a great day.